In this lecture, I will give you a simplistic flavor of uh, an important like part of I mean important part of the design flow or design automation flow called system and net, net, net list and system partitioning. So, in digital systems the designs are become increasingly complex huge in size of the order of millions or hundreds of millions in some cases. So, the pragmatic one of the pragmatic up the most pragmatic approach of handling such a, a huge complexity is to use divide and conquer approach where wherein we partition the big design into manageable sub designs. So, that each sub design meets some constraints of the resource constraints like the uh, each design should be fitable on us uh, the if FPGAs we have at our disposal or whatever. But uh, one of the main uh, cons uh, like uh, optimization criterion is to like try and minimize the number of connections which go across the sub designs that is kind of communication uh, that is going to be the interaction complexity. So, we would like it is each one of the sub designs to be as independent of the other one as possible. So, clearly uh, it uh, uh, the I mean the idea is to try and minimize the number of connections that is one of the most natural objective uh, objectives to optimize in such partitioning uh, approaches. Okay. So, the primary goal of partitioning is to primary goal often is to minimize the num number of connections interconnection between sub circuits. So, for example, let us take this uh, a dummy exam contrived example uh, with say 8 cells of 9 nor whatever kind very simple cells each one of them can be implemented on the standard cell. And let us say that we have we have been asked to like to implement this circuit uh, consisting of 8 gates onto 2 two chips of for the sake of illustration assume that we have on this chip four standard cells which can accommodate up to up to four gates and on this chip we have four standard cells which can accommodate up to four cells okay so we in that net list we had eight cells eight gates so this should suffice okay and let's assume that we have plenty of plenty of area to route the connections if uh, connections uh, from between these cells so, now there are plenty of options you know which which of these 4 cells should go on this chip which of those which of which 4 of those 8 cells should go on to the other one right. So, supposing supposing we had uh, like you know uh, we try to we took the option of cutting this uh, net list with 8 gates into uh, into this 4 a b c d and the uh, uh, remaining four E F G H. So, uh, along this uh, cut line we partition the circuit into two parts one with A B C D and the other one with E F G H. Similarly, we could take other option some other cut for example, this cut 2 given by this green line in which we are going to put A B D E on one side one chip with those four standard cells and the cells or gates C F G H on the other chip the four standard cells of the other chip. So, let us look uh, let us uh, just visualize how it would look like. If we were to take the first uh, option of uh, partitioning along the so called cut line 1 with A B C D A B C D on one side and E F G H on the other side. A, uh, this a this gates a b c d could be placed uh, again uh, using some algorithm we could decide that a b c d should be placed in those four standard cells in this fashion and e f g h are safe uh, placed on the other 
second chip on the four standard cells of that chip. Now, you see that uh, while completing the routing, we realize that the cell D has to drive the inputs of gate F and the cell C has to drive the input of gate G and these two, these two uh, connections have to go across the chip. Okay? Whereas, the all the other connections like A to C is within the within the first chip, the other connection like E to F is within the second chip, G to H is within, in, within the second chip and so on. So, only this connection from D to F and from C to G have to cross the uh, boundaries of these chips. Okay. So, we say that to uh, the cost of this particular cut separating this implementing this 8 gate design into these two parts is 2, because there are 2 wires that are being cut. Of course, this is fairly simplistic kind of example, but you just this is important to build abstractions. If on the other hand, if we were to take the other option this cut number 2 as shown in this by this green cut line which is going to separate A, B, D, E uh, on like you know uh, from C, F, G, H. So, A, B, D, E are we are going to try and we are going to put them on the left chip and E, F, G, H sorry C, F, G, H on the right side. So, by some placement strategy let us say we decide to put A, B, D, E on this four standard cells in this fashion C, F, G, H on this four standard cells. So, this is chip number 1, this is chip number 2. Now, you see that uh, like you know to do the complete the wiring you will realize that as many as 4 wires A to C, B to C, the D to F, E to F, this have to go across this across this partition. Okay. So, the cost of this particular uh, implementation would be 4 lines, 4 wires which have to be routed across. So, you know this would within a chip the the delays would be small across the chip delays could be large. So, uh, because of this reason we would like to try and keep this uh, number of uh, number of connections going across small. Uh, there are various considerations why we would like to minimize the number of uh, connections which have been broken. Okay. So, uh, clearly as shown in this example, uh, there are several choices, we have considered two of the choices and we uh, like uh, saw that the one, one of the, ch I mean the choice number 1 is cut 1 is better than the cut number 2. The algorithmic problem is how to identify this best, best or nearly best choice of how to partition. Okay. So, uh, To be able to design algorithm, one has to build use abstractions like graphs and hypergraphs for modeling netlist. So, supposing we have with the help of a graph, let us say Let us assume that uh, this particular graph represents abstractly some net list. Okay. Not really everything about a net list is being represented in this graph, but uh, like you know enough information that we will we'll going to use to partition this graph let us say. So, I just want to illustrate uh, one simple concept which we are going to use in the so called Kerning and Lean algorithm. So, this example is just about adequate for that. So, supposing currently at some uh, like you know intermediate snapshot of the algorithm algorithmic process to de decide on a good partition into two parts, this 1, 2, 3, this 5 nodes have been uh, like you know grouped on into one partition and this 
five remaining nodes have been grouped into other partition. So, this cut line is de describing a part a particular partition of this graph. So, now we want to see whether we can improve upon this and in particular we want to kind of re respect some constraint which a natural constraint uh, justifiable constraint that the new partition like this particular partition should also have 5 nodes on either side same number of nodes on either side. Let us say that uh, like every node has equal amount of uh, area requirement. So, we would like to mention make sure that neither of the side neither of the partition becomes to like you know rather too big uh, like compared to the other one or you know, that roughly they should be of same size. So, ideally we would like them the new partition which hopefully is better quality partition to be also of equal size on both sides. Okay. So, a natural idea would be to try and identify which uh, a pair of node on this side and a pair of node on this side and try and swap them. Okay. So, that will help us keep the sizes also balanced, but we will try to identify which of these swaps find 5 square swaps 25 possible swaps we should do so as to improve this okay. and a sequence of such swaps which we should like identify and, and commit to. So, that we have a better partition note that this is a problem with only 10 nodes we could have millions of nodes of this kind. So, it is not going to be easy to uh, like you know do it by trial and error there must be some uh, like uh, efficient algorithmic approach to take care of this to implement this. Okay. So, uh, let us un understand if we were to think in we are to analyze what happens if we swap decide to swap A and B. So, look uh, note that A and B are across the cut A is on the left side A is on one part and in one part and B is on the other, in the other part. So, notice that A is connected to two nodes uh, A is, is connected to two neighboring nodes on its own side and B is connected to only one neighboring node on its own side. Okay. On the other hand, A while A is connected to just uh, two nodes on its own side, A is connected to in fact three nodes on the opposite side and B is also connected to two nodes on the opposite side. Okay. So, if A were to move to the other side, what is going to happen that the three nodes, uh, three, three edges which link A to the other uh, side, they will become the internal edges of the new pa uh, like partition. So, basically moving A from here to here is going to drag these two edges into the cut at, at the same time these three edges will be which are currently in the cut will no longer uh, would no longer appear in the cut. Okay. So, on the similarly moving B from here to here would drag this blue this single edge into the cut and these two edges will yeah. So, this definitely this blue edge will be will be dragged into the cut this edge will also will will sort of vanish from the cut, but this edge which is currently in the cut it will continue to remain the cut because it is between A and B the pair of nodes which we are swapping. So, any node any edge which is between a pair of nodes which we are swapping that will continue to remain the cut. Any edge which is from a node being swapped into its own part it will now bring into the cut it will get brought into the cut and any edge which is across the cut and not between the pair that we are swapping like this edge or this edge this edge this edges which are currently in the cut they will vanish. Okay. So, the new cut uh, so the revised cut will have slightly different cost and that will be based on this numbers how many nodes uh, uh, like is A connected to its 
within its own part how many that is how many edges does A have incident on itself from its own side, how many edges does B have incident on uh, to itself on its from its own side. So, A has two edges incident to itself from its own side, B has exactly one edge incident to itself from its own side. A has 1, 2, 3 edges going to the other side, B has 1 and 2 edges going to the other side. Okay. So, these numbers are going to play some role. So, we will kind of define them. So, we will x of A, E x stands for external. So, we will we'll denote by E x t of A number of edges uh, which are going from A to the other side. So, that will be 3 here and int of A int representing the internal connections from A to its own side that will be 2. Okay. Similarly, x of B is 1 and 2, there are 2 connections from 2 links from B going to the other side, uh, int of B is 1 just 1. Furthermore, the cost of connection A to B is 1, there is only one link that is joining A and B. Now, see what happens when we swap. B has been brought here, A has been moved to the other side. Okay. So, A was connected to this pair of nodes okay. and B was connected to this. Furthermore, A was connected also to B and this through B was connected to B was connected to A as well as this node. This is the new partitioning uh, after swapping of A and B and what we notice is that number of before we swapped, we had how many edges being cut? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is the uh, after swapping A and B, this is the resulting network. The change in the in the cost of cut will turn out to be, we can verify or prove that it is going to be uh, e x t a minus i n t a plus e x t b minus a n t b. So, what does this first term mean? Uh, e x t a minus e x t in a e x t a are the number of connections that a had to the other side we, and those kind of edges are are going to get absorbed or like you know vanish from the cut. So, that is an improvement whereas, int a the number of edges connected to its own side they are going to appear in across the cut. So, this is the bad thing, this is the good thing, this is the bad thing good thing bad thing. So, this is some kind of this minus this is some kind of gain of moving A from uh, to the other side, this is the gain of moving B to the other side, but since we have done the swap the connections between the A and B would kind of offset things to a some extent and that will be minus 2 times the cost of the number of connections between A and B. Okay. So, in this particular example uh, the uh, e, e x t a was equal to 3, int a was 2, e x t b was 2 and int b was uh, is b int b is 1 and c a b cost is 1. So, what does this formula tell you? It is 3 minus 2 p 
plus 2 minus 1. So, that is 1 plus 1 minus 2 into 1. So, that is minus 2. So, that is 0. In this particular example, the change in the cost is going to be 0. There is no improvement in the cost. Okay. So, um, uh, it is quite simple stuff. So, I mean in this model, we are not going to describe the algorithms in detail or that is a, a study of a separate course on VLSI design automation. So, it is just for the sake of flavor and to kind of uh, slowly proceed to the illustration helping you to develop your own insights into how this modeling is done with the help of graphs and how certain simple like you know calculations will be done by the algorithm uh, which will on the basis of it the decisions will be taken and so on. So, this is I am just uh, like leading you to a very well known heuristic called Cunningham Lin heuristic which make use of such uh, accounting information, accounting approach okay, with the help of these numbers which together contribute to the so called gain in the cut. So, in general for any node define the so called d of u which is defined as gain in cut cost that means improvement that means reduction in cut cost gain means reduction uh, when u is moved to the other side. Okay. Clearly this can be easily shown to be it is e x t of u minus i n t of u where we had I have already illustrated the definition of what is e x t of u and what is e i n t of u. So, this is the number of edges which uh, which connect u to the other side and number of here number of edges connect connecting u to its own side nodes on its own side. Okay. So, if only uh, if instead of swapping if we are just moving a one vertex from one side to the other one this is the reduction this will give us the reduction in the cut because this many edges are going to vanish from the cut and this many edges are going to come into the into the uh, new cut. So, now this is for just a movement of a single nodes. Say supposing so our intention is to swap right. So, gain in cut due to swap of node say u and v uh, will will turn out to be the reduction in the cut cost is will turn out to be the gain due to movement of u the gain due to the movement of v, but offset by 2 times the number of connections between u and v. Okay. Can be easily proved you can think of it as an exercise. So, clearly, but uh, supposing you you have been asked to like uh, find, find a pair of nodes u on one side v on the other side which will like you know, whose swap will improve the cut that is reduce, reduce the cut to a good extent then you would definitely look for node u and v such that d u is very high that is this e x t u minus i n t u is high d v is high and hopefully the number of connections between them is uh, okay, they could be parallel connections of course, it is need not be just 1 or 0 this is small. Okay, so, then this particular reduction is as high as possible. So, greedily we would like to identify uh, this pairs of nodes to be swapped. So, now let us work with an example which I think appeared about uh, sometime last year a very good book compact book which uh, gives very good illustration of basic algorithms also some theory behind it. It is not an exhaustive book, there are better books which uh, there are books which are far more exhaustive on the subject or more specialized into certain uh, certain subtopics, but this will be a good book for the starters also very nicely written and good illustrations exercises and uh, sub good support for teaching. So, the example that I am doing is borrowed from this book uh, the chapter number 2 which is on graph partitioning. 
you can get more details like you know from the uh, this book. Okay, so the example that I am going to lead you through is a very simple example. Again, highly contrived, but illustrates ideas very well. So let's assume that uh, out of a net list, we have abstracted out a graph, and the graph is like. E okay A B C D E F G H okay so this is a eight node graph think of it like assume that this eight nodes each one of them is representing one gate or as one standard cell and let us say we have uh, maybe initially or at some point in the algorithm we have arrived at this particular partition. The partition A, B, C, D in one on one side and F, G, H on the other side. Okay. What is the cost of this partition? Is equal to you can see that it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and plus 4, 9. It is a high cost, right? It is a bad partition. Clearly, like if you see that, uh, you know, by just by inspection, you can see that if you were to partition this 8 node graph into 2 parts, equal parts, this would be the best. Uh, this would be the one which would minimize the number of edges being cut that will be precisely one. So, yeah I mean th uh, things are not going to be so simple to uh, visualize or ins solve by inspection. So, let us use this simple uh, example where we have good intuition of whether the algorithm the so called kerning and linear algorithm is it proceeding with some good natural uh, ins intuition or uh, uh, like you know has some natural intuition justification or not. So, it should be intuitively like obvious algorithm. So, now the uh, let us collect some okay, supposing let us uh, proceed along the natural idea that like you know since we have to keep this partition balanced like you know these two parts balanced we will uh, we'll commit to doing only swaps one at a time. Okay. So, and without any further clue like the obvious thing is to be try and greedy. So, supposing we have been told by experts that this uh, this problem of partitioning graph into two equal parts so that, so that the number of connections going across is minimized this problem is known to be NP hard or like you know. So, so it is it's good to kind of think in terms of heuristics and then develop further in, intuition insight and then try better approximation algorithms, more theoretical investigations, but uh, let us use our intuition first and try and design a good heuristic. So, that heuristic is one natural approach seems to be do swaps in a greedy way. Okay. So, what would be the first swap that you would kind of go for uh, with the intention of improving this cut as much as possible. Right now, the co cost of the cut is 9. Okay. So, for that uh, Again, I mean, the, some kind of uh, bookkeeping will help, and that bookkeeping will be in terms of or the account accounting information or whatever uh, would be this maintaining this D information for every node. D A equal to how much? D B, D C, and. So, d a will be how much for example, a what is d a the cost of moving or the or rather not a cost in fact, the gain or reduction in the cost if we were to move a to the other side. Of course, we are not just going to move we will swap, but if we were allowed to just move a from to the other side, a is connected to just one node on its own side that is internal cost of a is 1, 
but A is connected to two nodes on the other side E namely E and F. So, the gain in the cut if you move A to the other side is going to be 2 minus 1 that is 1. Okay. Similarly, gain for B is going to be 1, gain for C is will be how much? C is connected to one node only one node on its own side, but C is connected to one, two, three nodes on the other side. So, gain if we move C is going to be two, and but for D it's just one. For E one, F like C it's going to be two. G it is one, H it is one. Okay, from this information and the information about uh, the number of connections between any pair of nodes that is already available in this graph. From this, we will be, we'll be able to identify a pair whose gain will be highest, which when swap will be highest. So, recall that, just recall that gain uh, due to uh, gain in the cut or reduction in the cost of a cut due to swap, uh, swapping a pair u and v, of assuming that u and v are on the opposite side is the gain due to movement of u, gain due to movement of v minus 2 times of this is the offsetting thing. But fortunately, like you know, in this example, rather, in this example, it's quite obvious that since C and F have the highest gain due to their movement, and C and F, although they are connected by one, it will turn out to be the best pair to swap. Okay, one can verify that look by comparing it with all other pairs. best pair swap is evidently C and F. Okay. Once we do that, what will be the reduction or gain in the cost in the cost of cut that will be earlier cost that is 9 minus the gain due to C comma F which is 9 minus how much D C plus D F. Okay, I think I made a mistake. Uh, okay. uh, so, let us put a question mark here is C F because C and F have very high uh, like you know both of them have the highest gain of just uh, movement to each will it give us the best pair to swap this will be 9 minus uh, how much gain will be 2 plus 2 minus 2 that is 9 minus 2 7 on the other hand consider swapping c and say E. Okay. So, gain due to the swap of C and E will be D C plus D of E minus 2 times C. Okay. So, this will be 2 plus 1, but although this is less than, th but here it is 0. So, this is 3. So, here the gain was just 2 so that helped reduce the partition the cut cost from 9 to 7, but here if we swap C and E instead instead of swapping C and F we would have the improvement in the cut cost by 3. So, the cut would reduce to 9 minus 3 that is 6 which is better. So, uh, like maybe you know we should not simply uh, try and be uh, like you know, one will have to work out all possible for every possible pair the gain and hopefully that is not too much of computation and then uh, find a one that is best. So, in this case it, we can verify and uh, further and uh, confirm that C and E is the C and E is the best pair to swap. Okay. So, C and F our uh, earlier intuition I mean sort of, uh, guess was wrong. Yeah. So, this is the new picture uh, across this cut line and the new cut cost is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and confirm that it is 9 minus gain of C comma E. 
that is 9 minus yeah so now let's mark here that uh, c and e have been like you know are the ones which have participated in the swap and like you know to uh, decide the next swap or subsequent swaps we will now not like you know allow them to play any role we will kind of freeze them in their like respective parts they will not play any role until we kind of consider the other swaps uh, as a sequence of swaps which will hopefully improve the cut cost to uh, I mean in the best possible way. Okay. So, uh, I say that now what I remark over here is that swap uh, swap C E here uh, swap C and E and fix fix them. So, we are not going to allow them to participate fix this pair of nodes C and E like you know we not allow them to participate in future swaps. So, now in this uh, in this graph in this partitioning that we have it has that has resulted after this first swap uh, we have again have to kind of uh, like you know find a next best pair of swaps. So, like uh, without let which do not involve either C or E. Okay. So, could it be A f or could it be D e or whatever. So, what do you think what would be the best pair of uh, nodes to be swapped again we have to calculate those d values the gain values for which reflect the gain by movement of a node onto the other side, but we have to correct it by that twice this connection c times u comma v and all that. So, we can we have to compute up gains by for every allowed swap and find the best one. So, it will so turn out that. So, if you uh, just like in fact quite uh, we can notice that d is a kind of node which is standing by which is kind of disconnected from everything else on its side. So, most naturally you know so you will start I means you can start guessing that d should participate in swap because you know at this nothing to lose everything it has to gain all the edges which are connected to d are uh, to the other side. So, by moving d onto the other side you are going to gain all that much and lose nothing. Similarly, on this side uh, it looks like there is no such node like d which is isolated, but f is next best thing to isolate it. So, if we move f to the other side we see that only one edge will come into the cut, but three as many as three edges will vanish from the cut. And thirdly, there is no connection between D and F. There is no, you know, the gain in gain due to the swap of D and F is going to be the gain due to movement of D, the plus the gain due to the movement of F minus no correction because there is no link between D and F. So next best pair to swap. will turn out to be swap D and F. Okay. And that will give us instead of in place of D we have brought F and in place of F we are going to bring D F was here. Okay, please uh, let, let me with the green circles mark that already C had participated, E had participated in swaps and now D and F have participated in swaps. So, they are going to be frozen. Okay. So, after swapping uh, D and F and fixing fixing of D and F we get the following diagram following graph right. So, we note that current cost of cut is equal to 1 we would like to check that it is earlier cost that is six, uh, 6 minus the gain due to 
due to what the pair which pair we have swapped d and f is it 6 minus uh, what is gain due to d and f that is d of d plus d of f minus 2 times c number of connections between d and f which is yes I mean verify that 6 minus it is d of d is how much is d of d number of external connections from d that is 1 2 3 minus number of internal connection that is 0. So, d of d is 3 what is d of f uh, number of external connections to the other side is 1 2 3 minus internal is 1. So, d of f is 2 minus 2 times 0. So, this is indeed 6 minus 5 that is 1. So, it is confirmed. Okay. So, that particular formula that you can easily prove we have been verifying that validating that with this example. So, so far we have made uh, greedily locally greedily like two uh, swaps the first we executed a swap C E fix those nodes did not we are not going to allow them to participate in any future swap until the so called pass is over. I will tell you what the pass means. Then we again by looking at the revised uh, partition we figured out that the pair D and F is the best pair to swap that we swap fixed it and that that has resulted in a very good looking partition with only one edge across it. So, you you know that this is like something the best that we have already obtained, but in, in general in a big algorithm uh, in the when this algorithm is run on a very big circuit very big design you are not going to be able to easily conf, uh, like you know guess that this is the best or this is nearly the best that you have reached and you need not go further waste your time further. So, we should the algorithm should go ahead and sort of you know uh, not arbitrarily stop here with some kind of confidence uh, that would be that could be premature right. So, let us go ahead. Now, we have this very we already arrived after swap of C E and followed by swap of D F. So, this this gave us the gain of 3 this gave us the gain of further 5. So, with the help of these two swaps and uh, like you know we have re reduced the cut from 9 to 6 and then to further to 1 and we have got this uh, we have committed uh, we have fixed the node C D E F not going to allow them to take any further. Now, we know intuitively that if we try to do any further swapping things will not get any better this is the only best cut, but uh, you know the algorithm would not have known that so uh, like so early. So, the main idea natural idea we have uh, like that turning and lean and lean like you know develop was. You know, start with some initial partition, initial equal size partition, and just go through a sequence of swaps. And every time while deciding the swap, decide the best possible swap that, the, like you know, that would in the in terms in terms of uh, the amount of reduction that the swap would result in in the cut cost, and uh, look find the best best possible pair to swap among the ones uh, the nodes which are not fixed yet and keep on doing the uh, exercising the swaps and fixing the nodes which are involved in the swap. So, that they do not take part in the swap and finally, after n by 2 such steps where n is the number of nodes we would have uh, like you know tried out uh, like you know so enough swaps which would have frozen uh, which would like you know which would complete a so called pass because after we swap a pair of nodes we do not let them participate in any future swap in the so called pass. So, after n by 2 such swaps we would have come come to the so called end of a pass. And in this end of the pass uh, we would have been like you know based on the gain of the pair that has been swapped we would be I uh, like you know we would be changing we would be getting the uh, new partition of a different cost. If the gain is positive we would be getting the partition of improved cost if the gain is negative now that is surprising why would we bother about swapping a pair of nodes 
with negative gain. But, but supposing we do that or we have to do that uh, as required by the algorithm, then negative gain would mean that next partition would have higher cost or like you know yeah so that is actually worse. So, so far we have seen two swaps here swap C E that was the first one after which we commit like you know fix those vertices C and E and then swap D and F and both cases the gains were positive we are lucky. So, we were improving we improved the cut from 9 to 6 9 minus 3 6 and then 6 minus 5 1 that is the current situation. But like you know what about the non fixed nodes like A B is D G H we should optimistically try although uh, by inspection we know that nothing will uh, yield us anything better, but algorithm with would not like you know uh, try and get any certificate whether like at this current time do I have the best one not like halfway or you know before the pass is over. So, we have this so called notion of a pass. A pass of it is basically a sequence of swap of pairs followed by where we swap and fix vertices vertex ok. So, so this this pass ends after n by 2 swaps where n is the number of vertices ok, where n is assumed to be E 1. These are all uh, like you know we should not worry about these restrictions because one can always you know add some dummy nodes and make number of nodes E 1 and all that. And also these are some just basic ideas on which we can uh, like you know uh, from which one can think of lot of variations uh, and uh, improvisations. So, that is why uh, like in uh, in this overview lecture like this or uh, it would just suffice to uh, highlight the basic ideas and the sim simplest such algorithms. There are far more interesting variations of this which are practical as well as uh, efficient practical as well as interesting by itself that should we could leave it to the next course or some other course specialized course on VLSI CAD. Okay, so, so, this is the concept of pass that is uh, a sequence of swaps how many n by 2 sw swaps because after every swap we are going to uh, like you know disable the swap pair of nodes from any other from participating any future swaps. Okay. So, after n by 2 swaps we would have fixed all the nodes for that pass and then after that we can take a pause. So, so far we have not reached that end of the pause uh, end of the pass. So, we should continue. Okay. So, if we continue from here. So, pass is not over. Okay. So, then the question is best pair next best pair of unfixed nodes that is a question right. So, what, what will it turn out to be? Okay, we have A B from this side and G H from this side eligible to participate in swaps and it looks like we can take any pair right A a B uh, G B uh, B G or uh, B H whatever because it is all uh, like uniform now same thing because uh, the uh, D cost for A B D D for A the gain not the cost the gain for a, gain resulting in movement of A is going to be 1 2 3 rather like it is the other, other way around it is uh, 0 is the external cost and everything is internal. So, the gain is going to be negative in fact, it is going to be as bad as minus 3 
d a is minus 3 right why because z external cost is uh, external connections 0 number of internal connections is 1 2 3. So, x u x a minus int a is minus 3 similarly d b is going to be minus 3 and d g is going to be minus 3 d h minus 3 all right. And uh, also we see that there are no connections between any pair from uh, this side uh, like any pair of nodes one from here and one from here neither connection a and g a h all connections as uh, there are no connections. So, by the gain formula you see that the gains are going to uh, gain by swapping is going to only make things worse for any pair the gain is going to be minus 6 high very negative gain. So, it is going to in fact worsen the cost of partition next partition, but still like you know we should we are committed to continuing with the pass and we let us say a b is the let us take not a b, but a g. So, swap a g and fix. So, what do we get as a result of this? This is the we will get a new partition, a different partition of how much cost? We had previous partition of really good cost 1 but uh, we are going to get uh, we have to subtract from it the the gain rather like negative gain that we get out by partition by swapping a g which is going to be 1 minus minus 6 that is 7. Okay. So, let us confirm. So, this is going to be the resulting uh, like you know picture. Verify that number of uh, edges cut is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Confirm with confirming that our formula. So, things are really made this uh, things worse. So, but that is the interesting thing about algorithm, it you have to proceed optimistically, hoping that in future things will again get better, but in this particular example, it will not. So, let, now let us just complete this pass. We have only uh, after this we would have frozen G, E, F, C, D, A. So, only pair to swap is B and H. So, next there is no choice swap b and h and fix them and fix okay and that will be the end of pass what do we get we don't even need to draw this now swap b and h and fix end of pass notice that what we had done by the at this last step of the pass is like you know swap the last possible swapping pair of nodes unfixed nodes pair of nodes and uh, what we will simply have is this uh, the same picture just uh, reflected right as we that we started off in the beginning. So, we had a b c d on this side, but a b c d have been swapped with g uh, e f g h and so we will have a I mean uh, with some rearrangement we will have okay. I have taken the liberty to uh, just rearrange this position of nodes accepting the, of course may ensuring that uh, like you know the a b c d is on one side and e f g h are on the other side. Okay. So,
and this. Okay. This is the resulting picture with some bit of redrawing. So, cut cost is going to end up as it was in the beginning 9. Okay. So, this must have been you can verify that it will be 7 minus gain of the last swap that is B H. You can verify that this will be gain of B H is going to be minus 2. Okay. Yeah, so we are expected to kind of get back the same initial partition at the end of this pass. So, we need not actually go up to the last uh, like you know uh, we would know we do not need to compute anything explicitly, but this is the result that is inevitable. But now let us talk let us look at all this uh, the whole pass what we have done. In this pass, we started with a swap C comma E, then swap D comma F, then swap A comma G, last inevitable like or redundant swap the gain of was uh, 3 gain 5 gain minus 6. We did not calculate it, but can be verified. Okay. So, cut cost was 9 in the beginning. After this swap, it became 6. After this swap, it became 1. And then it became rose to 7 again and further worsened back to 9. Okay. So, you see that during the pass we have this particular sequence of uh, like partitions and their cut cost and we then we simply like you know decide the best point. After having seen the whole swap we, we can now like you know see that there is uh, like uh, this, this would have been the this is clearly the best partition to arrive at the best part this partition with this particular best cut cost, we should only commit to get the best partition in this uh, scene during this pass. Clearly, we only commit the first two swaps right okay because only after this first two swaps we exactly after this first two swaps we get a best partition with this uh, best cost and then after that it will make things worse okay it might improve again but it will never be as good as what we have got up at the end of this so looking at this sequence of uh, partitions and their cut cost we can decide and this is the res what we call the result of this pass okay and this is the best partition that we got at the end of the pass then th what the next thing that we can do or the cunningham linear algorithm does is uses this part the best partition as the initial partition of the next pass it hope optimistically hopes that like you know there might be some improvement in fact uh, if it were the case that at the end of this pass whatever we best we get is the global best then this problem would have been tractable, but in fact, it has been proved to be a hard problem. So, you know, this will like we will have counter examples where this, although in this example, after a single pass, we got the best one. In most general examples, you will not get necessarily the best globally best partition as the best partition of a single pass of the first pass itself. So, we will uh, one should the algorithm should go to the next pass and but there what might happen is that uh, the pass next pass may not improve the partition. It might so happen that any pair uh, or any sequence of uh, swaps in that pass is going to give make the partition cost worse in which case we just accept that uh, whatever we got at the end of the previous pass as the best one. Okay. So, that is the main idea behind the algorithm or like uh, like loose informal description of the algorithm, it it does one or more passes within each pass 
it does a sequence of swaps, swap and fix. Once you swap a pair of nodes, where the pair of nodes is chosen greedily on the basis of the gain, gain in the cut cost, you fix those pair of nodes, that pair of nodes so that they do not participate in any further swaps. In that pass, at the end of n by 2 such swaps, the pass is over. Then you take a look at the pass, the sequence of partitions and the cut cost, take stop at the best like you know, look at the best point that you have reached, you had reached during this pass. Commit only those swaps like in this example just two swaps, first two swaps and that is the best partition out of this pass. Then use this best partition as the initial partition for the next pass and if things improve fine then go on to the next pass. If the things do not improve stop, maybe some kind of we are stuck in some kind of local optima that is what might happen often. There are ways around it but still you know getting global optima for large size problem is going to be brutally hard. So, do not hope for that too easily. Yeah, so this I hope is uh, like uh, something that describes the essence of kerning and linear algorithm and the main idea is to kind of try and like you know think of your variations, uh, the very natural variations uh, which like you know make this algorithm more efficient or which make this algorithm more general and so on. So, the, and that is how the things proceeded from K L there were various variants and that they become more standard better algorithms which are still uh, used in most of these uh, CAD tool packages and you know uh, and the research is still going on. There is now more focused on performance based partitioning and performance based placement. So, objectives are changing uh, and like a lot of tech technology implementation related like objectives uh, are being brought in. This was purely topological number of connections being cut. Okay. Things can be far more general than that. I will stop here.